Welcome back, folks, to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today it's uh, raining again. Uh, we want to do Dutch oven video. So we uh, had to bring it in here on the porch and put it on the old propane burner again. But I uh, want to show you today, um, our, uh, it's just a nice day for it. Our, our uh, recipe we've been working on for a couple years now for the perfect chili. So we get on to that. It's going to be a complicated kind of a recipe, a lot of steps involved with it. Um, so you might want to keep track of it as we go. I'll try to put the whole thing up at the end of the video. Um, but you need to keep track of the process because it's made quite differently than um, some other chilies you might be have made in the past. We actually make the three separate parts of it. We make the meat part, we make the, the beans, and then we make the tomatoes. Um, we make that all separately and then combine them at the end. So pay attention, it's gonna go fast, gonna be a lot of um, ingredients. We actually um, developed this recipe for competition. We went up against a hundred teams and placed third with this particular recipe we're cooking today. All right guys, our first step is going to be doing the beans. They take the longest, so we're going to start them first. Let's go ahead and fire up our Dutch oven. We've already uh, preheated the layer a little bit. just want to have this on a low to medium flame. I'm going to get crazy with it. You know, these Dutch ovens do hold their heat very well. So we're just going to start out. Pot's already getting warm. Um, there's a lot of ingredients here, so pay attention. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll try to write it down. Just need to know which order they go in. First off, we're going to start with a, a small diced onion. Put that in there. Okay, what we have here is uh, diced red, fresh red chili peppers. I tested these, tested these before. They're very hot. I'm only going to put about half of those in there for now. You can always bring them back in there later if we need to bump it up. And then we got uh, three cloves of minced garlic. Starting out our base here. Okay. And we're just going to give that a stir. We do have a little bit of uh, oil in the bottom of the pot. We're just going to get those started, get them started, and soften up a little bit. Breathing the fumes off of those chilies, they're they're pretty uh, they're pretty aromatic. Okay, now uh, our beans we've already did these a pasto method. We boiled them uh, to a boil, let them sit for one hour. We did um, marinate these with some uh, cilantro and cumin uh, during the soaking process. We've also put in about one cup of beef stock. You know, we want this to be a nice beefy chili. So it's got about a beef, uh, a cup of beef stock. Let's go ahead and pour it in there. We may have to adjust the water level. Um, keep the cook there and cook a while. Now the, the spices that go in here now, this is um, a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of cumin, and a teaspoon of ground ginger. So that goes in. What we're doing here is building layers of flavor in each one of the uh, three main components of the chili. So, we're going to give that just a little bit more water and we'll cap it off with a lid. And let I guess one, some of you are wondering probably why we made all the three separate ingredients um, and then we're going to try to combine them at the end. Well, the main reason is, is you can control the doneness of your beans, the doneness of your meat and uh, the consistency of your tomato base and then combine them all at the end so all your three ingredients of your chili is perfect. Right, our next step here is we're going to go ahead and marinate our meat. Got our beans going. They're already smelling great by the way. This is a uh, ground brisket that we ground ourselves. Um, and you can use uh, you can use regular hamburger. Um, you just want to not try to skimp on the uh, fat on it. Um, if you want to make this great rich dish um, need that rendered fat. Okay, so in the end of this, we got uh, salt, pepper, and garlic, about a tablespoon of each, and a good t uh, tablespoon of fresh uh, Mexican culantro or cilantro, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to dump all that in there. It's also got a little cumin. And we're just going to mix it all thoroughly through through the meat, get it all broken up and mixed in there. 
and it's just to help uh, the flavor and to help the spices dissolve. I'm going to give it a couple of three dashes, four dashes, whatever, of um, just Worcestershire sauce. I'm just going to mix all that up together. And those spices and the salt and pepper will uh, start to permeate that meat. We are, we're only got about a pound here. We're not going to overload this. So it's about a pound of uh, fresh ground beef. Uh, we're just going to cover that up with uh, cellophane, put it back in the fridge, and uh, just leave it set um, until we're ready for it. But if you got the day to do it, um, do it early and uh, let it sit for a couple hours after it's done. Uh, you'll be amazed at how well it comes out. All right, it's been an hour. Um, we've added water uh, one time, fogging up the lens there. Um, smell awesome. Just tested one. Uh, the perfect doneness. Yeah, these are small red beans. They cook a little faster than the big red kidney beans. And you can see that most of the, uh, the water has been absorbed. That's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and cut these off, take them out, and uh, start the next step. Okay, we took the beans out of the pot. The thing I want to show you, no need to clean this. Let's put a little bit more oil back in there. Uh, just keep the, we're going to do the meat next. And, yeah, there might be some little bits of beans rolling around in there. A uh, little bits of onion. Not going to matter at this point. Just throw a little oil in the bottom. Now we, we have had our meat here. This has been uh, marinating in the fridge. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, just put that in there. And we'll brown it off just like you would do with uh, any other type of chili recipe. So we're just going to break it up and uh, let it simmer and brown. So after this starts to brown, you see it's starting to brown up there nicely, starting to render the fat. We're just going to go ahead and put another. Um, about a half a cup of, uh, not, I wouldn't call it uh, minced, uh, more of just uh, roughly diced onion in that. I'm just going to stir that around and let that, uh, you know, some of the oil from the from the uh, ground beef, you know, cook those onions until they're translucent. Okay, folks, it's, it's been a few minutes. We have this on a, a medium heat. You see, it's starting to brown down at the bottom starting to get those little brown bits. You don't want to kind of stop it at that point. Just enough to get a little fawn going on the bottom of your pot. Keep it on medium heat, you know, no, don't try to uh, do this too quick. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. Um, and that's why we call it perfect chili, because your beans are not overdone, uh, your meat's not greasy. You know, if you have a, if you have a, some beef that's really fatty, you can, and you want to cut down on the amount of oil, you can drain that off ahead of time. If you just throw it in a the pot, then you've got what you got. Okay, now that we've taken our meat out, our pot's back up to temp. We've got about uh, about a half cup of beef stock. And we're just going to use that to deglaze the pan and uh, get all those good bits that are floating around the bottom in there or stuck to the bottom. We're raising the fawn. Get that fawn up. And then we're just going to go ahead and pour that right back over our meat. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with the tomato based or tomato part of the um, the recipe and um, since we took most of our oil out um, by deglazing the pan we're going to go ahead and just put a little bit of olive oil in it just has a little higher uh, temperature range and then um, this is something you may not have seen before which is regular tomato paste this is a small can of tomato paste all right we're going to go ahead and try to get that in there you know it's not the easiest thing in the world to get out of the container and get it into what you're cooking we're going to go ahead and put that in as well as possible. And then we're going to just brown this. Um, we're going to brown it in the olive oil. You just want to kind of chop it up, keep it moving around. And what we want that to do is caramelize the sugars in that tomato paste. Uh, and it will really, really bring out the flavor of it. Just keep moving this around, and uh, I'll show you what's what happened here is you know, I've had this on for a few minutes, and you can smell the tomatoes kind of caramelizing. You're getting this fawn in the bottom of the pot. The fawn is what we want, and what we're going to bring it up now is just going to go ahead and put some another um, couple of small onions or one large onion 
in there. We're just going to start stirring that in there. And as these uh, onions start to sweat and release their moisture, they're going to bring up the fond off the bottom of the pot with them. So, this is something you may not have uh, seen before done on. Uh, we do this a lot in Cajun cooking. Um, kind of like a do on a gumbo base kind of a deal. Um, we brought this over to our chili. Now you got to keep your temperature uh, way down on the pot when you're doing this, or this tomato will just burn. Period. Um, you know, here the onions are actually going to um, uh, initially add to the fond, and then they'll start to bring it up. But we're going to watch it, make sure it doesn't get uh, too dark. It's starting to form there now. You can see how it sticks on the back of the spatula. You can scrape it up a little. But that uh, good dark caramelization from the onions and the, uh, you see how the liquid's starting to come out. So the um, tomato paste is starting to break up a little. So we're just going to let that go a couple of minutes. Now, today uh, we left a lot of the spice out of it. Um, if I make it too spicy here, nobody will eat it. Um, just have your, your good old sriracha sauce here uh, at the end. Adjust it as uh, as you like it, um, and as you know, saltiness, all that kind of thing, uh, is easy to adjust at the end. As long as you got some salt in it, while you're doing it, your uh, you know your three parts, and just keep it moving. You know, don't let it sit around too long, because um, it it can burn you. I got the flame down just about as low as I could get it on this fish cooker. Um, on an open fire, it'd be easier. You could just either raise the pot up, you know, raise the pot a little higher above the fire to make it uh, easier to control the heat that way. Actually, easier than this. Um, I wish we could do that today, but weather's not permitting. All right, so that's looking pretty good now. So here we have um, about a 24 uh, ounce can of diced tomatoes, and we're just going to use a little bit of this uh, tomato juice to go ahead and release the fawns. We're just going to pour the juice off of it. At this point here, we're just going to use, just using that to get this fond up. Again, everything that we're wanting to put in this pot, we're wanting to build a flavor. Um, you know, probably the last thing you want to put in here is water. You can see how that, that fawn just uh, pretty much released. That got really rich. Um, the water from the tomatoes evaporated very quickly. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and put, now that we got the fawn up, we're just going to go ahead and put the rest of them in. And this will start our tomato base. Just incorporate that. All right, now we have a tablespoon of brown sugar, a tablespoon of commercial chili powder. Uh, no salt. Um, we're going to use some. Uh, you see some of that fond there on the on the edge of the spatula. Uh, that's what's going to bring the richness of this. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, brown sugar is going to cut a little bit of the acid of the tomato, and of course the chili powder is going to give you that uh, traditional chili uh, um, flavor. Let me go ahead and help that get out of there a little bit. You can make this without the chili powder, but a lot of people like that flavor. So we're going to go ahead and get that um, stir around in there and get that going. And you can see it's, it's pretty dry right now for cooking those uh, tomatoes down. You can see what you made the same way, depending on how watery you, you know, uh, your tomatoes are, so on and so forth. You can control it, uh, each of those three ingredients, much better by doing them three separate and then combine them at the end. So we're going to go ahead and give it... Uh, uh, just about a cup of beef stock. Again, adding a flavor every time we add something we want to, to add flavor, not take away flavor. So we might want to bring that up just a little bit more. Um, you know, just check your consistency. Those tomatoes are going to cook, and uh, you know, a lot of the uh, moisture will come out of them at that point. So don't go crazy with uh, the. Um, the consistency right now. We'll give it a few minutes and we'll come back and check on it.
Okay, it's been about an hour with our um, tomato um, base here. Just gonna lift the lid off and take a look at it. The consistency is just about perfect. It's gonna look like thin gravy. So we can uh, we can adjust this when we put our other ingredients in. But that's now ready for the other parts. Put the lid aside. We have our meat here. I'm gonna go ahead put our meat in. Most of that in there. And then we have our beans. They're all ready to go. So, and they're already perfectly cooked. So, just gonna get those in there. Give her a stir. And we'll kind of check to see what our final consistency is. And you know, your consistency may differ. Uh, to me, that's about perfect right there. It's not too thin, not too thick. Um, now's the time you wanna, you check your seasoning, uh, adjust your salt, um, your hotness is, uh, you want, and turn it off. Uh, just let it sit. Everything's done. So now what it just needs is time. Okay, as usual, here's how we're gonna we're gonna plate this up. We're gonna try to make it true backwards gourmet style. Gonna put a little dot of olive oil in the bottom of the bowl, the bowl and the plate. We're just gonna take our finger and we're gonna swirl that um, up out of the bowl, a couple different directions. Then we're gonna sprinkle it with a little chili powder, and you can see what happens. You can see what happens with the bowl there. It's a little chili powder, a little design of bottom of the bowl. Okay. Now we're going to take a terrine of, this is a Mexican culantro infused rice with garlic. We just uh, press it into a terrine and hopefully this will come out. We did coat the terrine with olive oil. Perfect. All right. We just want to uh, center that in the bottom of our bowl. You guys can see that. Now we're going to take our uh, chili that we worked so hard on today and we're going to spoon that just around the terrina rice. Trying to keep it off the top because we covered most of our pattern up there, but it's okay. All right, now for garnish, we have a fresh baby spinach leaf. We're going to poke that down in the bot into the uh, terrine. Then we have uh, these are fire roasted uh, red chili peppers um, cut into uh, julienne strips. These are pretty damn hot. And this will kick it, it up a notch. Gonna just lay those on there in kind of a pattern. And then we have also some fire roasted sweet onion um, strips. Having a hard time handling those guys. Gonna just uh, lay a few of those on there. And uh, maybe a few of those on top of the chili around the edges. Okay, and then the final touch, we got uh, just a little bit of sour cream. Just going to try to take a nice little dollop. We're going to put that right on top. Maybe get a little peak, a little, little bob there. And then just right on top, just sprinkle just a little bit of chili powder. And then we're going to take our towel, clean up our plate. hard to do without the uh, we didn't quite get our pattern on our bowl up high enough but there's enough to show you the idea you clean up the bowl and, uh, there you have it um, 
perfect chili. Done backwards gourmet style. With a beautiful presentation. <laughs>